Um, I think we will and already have developed herd immunity and we will continue to manage it through herd immunity or accommodate it through herd immunity as we do many other um, you know, lethal pathogens. I think flu is much more dangerous actually than COVID and I, I think that it will, that this particular virus will settle into an endemic state just like flu does um, with the human population. Um, I do think that vaccines are going to be important in protecting the vulnerable. I mean, one thing we haven't talked about is who precisely is dying of this virus. And it's very clear, that is very clear that it is the vulnerable and um, the elderly frail or those with comorbidities. And uh, hopefully the vaccine will be helpful in protecting the vulnerable sector um, of the population. And of course, the only other way to protect the vulnerable sector is to lower the risk, which we can do again, either through vaccinating the whole population or allowing the population to develop natural immunity and perhaps a combination of, of, of the two. So that I think that place is, goes three, one, and then what I don't think is going to happen is that the virus is going to mutate to a lower level of virulence. Um, I don't think there's any particular reason to believe that it, that it is capable of doing that. But in 1918 flu epidemic pandemic, uh, nobody knows exactly how it disappeared exactly, but some uh, scientists say that this could be due to the mutations of the virus. Is it so? No, I don't think so. I think what happened there was that the when it came, it killed a lot of people because there was this large standing crop of immunologically naive individuals. So after that, it settled, and this is exactly what's gonna happen this time as well, I think, uh, except fortunately the uh, standing crop of naive individuals was um, not um, what it was in, in the 1918 flu. Um, and I think that's because many of us have, I mean, all of us have, some form of coronavirus and I think we all have some degree of protection against um, the SARS-2. Obviously that breaks down in people who have diabetes or um, whose immune systems are um, starting to fail. But overall I think there's a lot of cross immunity already in the population uh, through exposure to other coronaviruses. And um, I think uh, so, so that's why it's only killed those who are vulnerable. The 1918 flu killed a bunch of vulnerable individuals and then the rest became immune to it. And then actually I think it lasted, that same particular strain was around until it mutated to a different antigenic type in the you know, 30s probably or early 30s or so. And essentially right now, the H1 influenza strain that is circulating, has been in circulation since 2009, is antigenically identical to the 1918 flu. So I don't think there was anything vir uh, specifically virulent about the 1918 flu. It's just that the 2009 flu, which is the same thing, arrived in a population which is already, um, which is not naive to flu in general. So I hold a lot. <laughs> of stock in um, uh, you know cross immunity arising from exposure to related pathogens.